Welcome to She Moves Bravely, a podcast dedicated to empowering women through stories of resilience, courage, and success. I'm your host, Shantae Dent. Today, I have the honor of introducing you to a woman who moves bravely, and her name is Karen Deloach. Welcome to the show, Karen. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. (laughs) I am excited to have you. I think about how we met through a coaching program and our journeys were able to uh, cross that on that path. And just what I know about you, uh, what has ignited your fire, I thought it would be incredible to share your story with our audience. I love every aspect of your story. We're going to get into as much of it as we can. So I'm passing the baton to you, Karen. Go ahead and share your story, introduce yourself, and we're going to have a great time. Thank you so much. Yes, uh, we are entrepreneur, women entrepreneurs, you know, making these pivots in our life. And you're a, a beautiful young woman. And I am later in life, a uh, woman ha- is celebrating my 70th birthday. Ooh. So I'm, I'm very grateful to have done this shifting, but it has been a steep learning curve to learn how to market myself. I'm an artist. I'm an art mentor and an art coach, as you described. And um, I love to uh, draw, paint, sculpt. Um, I'm an author. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm an actor and um, filmmaker. So I, someone gave me this name. I'm a creativity specialist. I like it, I like it a lot. <laughs> And, you know, I, I teach in college, teach art, and, and I use books that I've written because I know my students. I live in um, South Carolina, and many of my students haven't had the opportunity to, to go to galleries and art museums much in their life, maybe at all. And so I've got a book with 1,800 images, and they get to at least look at look at art, if not um uh, read the book <laughs> and and they can form an opinion, which is what I'm looking for them to do to become to become art clients and if not nothing else and to stir up their own creativity because this this last few years so we've all had these challenges right and moved online and and learning marketing learning sales at my age and uh, what I found is you know this when you love people and and you love sharing what what you've poured your life into with others to see them stir up and find healing and and a creative path is just a sheer joy. It, it is an absolute joy. Um, I found through the years teaching all ages the miraculous healing power of art, mentally, emotionally, physically. I've seen miracles and miracles, had them happen in my own life. And, and as a result of that, I, I'm very passionate about people stirring up that right brain side of them to catch up with their brilliant left brains, making those neural connections and having a really full, fulfilled, purpose-filled life, even even in in our older years. (laughs) You are multifaceted and multi-talented. This is the part of me that cheers you on. I'm proud of Karen. She did not give up. (laughs) You know, the beginning (laughs) stages of your journey, you started in a space where mm, the instructors, they weren't on board with your style, with your flow, and you could have stopped. And we would not know of this amazing, incredible instructor who's bringing the museum, the art and the sculptures to your rural students who, as I like that, they don't have access to go to the galleries. And you said, I'm going to bring it to you, going to put it in a book and bring it to you. Incredible. Yeah. But it didn't start there. You had a season where you didn't have individuals rooting for you and they didn't believe in what you yeah. were doing or your style. I went to art school and what I, you know, you're telling, talking about a story I had. A, I, I, I love to draw and I had really good drawing instruction and, and was successful in drawing. But once I started painting, which was my major and I, I was minoring in theater, but majoring in, in uh, painting. And I took all these painting classes from four different professors trying to get a different opinion. And they all came up with four letter words to describe my art. And it was devastating. I wanted to paint naturalistically. I love people. I love scenery and nature. 
And it was the era uh, they'd come from abstract expressionism. So the way I, I tied the gap was doing pop art, which I also love. I love a sense of humor, art that has uh, visual puns in it. But their their opinion of me as a painter devastated me to the point where I came into agreement that I wasn't good enough, that I would never be good enough. I switched to sculpture for graduate school, but always in the back of my heart was, I want to paint. I want to paint. When I was a little girl, my mom would give us paper and crayons and, and it just was never big enough. And I got in trouble all the time. I was painting on the walls, you know, and, and having to scrub off the walls. I get in so much trouble, but it's not big enough, mom. Well, you know, she had no idea that someday I'd be paid to paint on people's walls. I'd do murals and all kinds of businesses. That's what it was all home. about. <laughs> and so I found that out as a coach that we can also, you know, all find hints about our calling in our early childhood. What did you love? Did you love to spin and dance? Did you love to bang on the drums? I have one of my sons. That's all he did. Everything was a drum. And of course, he's a drummer. You know, I mean, it's just so cool to see the, sometimes these things manifest. And, you know, I, I tried over and over again in, after that, after school, to, to paint. And I would start these paintings and I couldn't finish them. I couldn't get my own my own I'm not good enough I couldn't get past that even if it wasn't my conscious thought I think at this time I'm going to do good I'm going to work through it I, I was having babies and they were so cute I wanted to paint them and and I, I just ended up with these stacks of unfinished paintings I kept trying but it, it just couldn't get through until I got a mentor and this is part of what makes me passionate about coaching and mentorship. This this older gentleman who had been to the Chicago Art Institute, he taught the fundamentals and he taught me how to paint. His, his techniques and the way he classically trained me enabled me to push past my own negative mindset, my own belief in not being good enough to where I built the skills and the training. Maybe I didn't have the natural talent that some people do, but I you know, I was able to push through and learn how to paint. Well, that not only made me an award-winning painter, but it's made me a much better teacher. Because I can then take what I learned and what worked for me and help my students get better and better and get the training they need if they want to be a painter. One of the common threads on She Moves Bravely podcast is we uh, are living our lives, going about our business, doing what we believe we should do in life. And then we run into a wall, a hurdle, a speed bump. And what we talk about on every episode is how did we navigate through that process so that we could overcome the limiting beliefs, the negative statements that uh, we were told, how did we overcome? And again, when we see what you are doing today, I don't know about anyone else, but I can't help but think, what if the younger Karen decided she would give up art? because of what the art instructors said, because they did not agree or approve of your artwork. What if you gave up completely and said, well, I guess I'm not called, I'm not called to do, I'm not called to be, I'll figure it out in another, you know, arena, I'll find something else. You could have given up, but you stood true to what was in your heart. And, and, it, and it sounds like it wasn't like an overnight easy fix. You dibbled and dabbled in different forms of art. And then here's where the magic happens. You connect it with a mentor. And that's another common thread that we love to highlight. Not feeling as if you have to go through life alone. Not feeling like you need to figure it out all by yourself. Connect with someone. Someone who can teach you an expert, someone who can encourage you, they're in your corner, encouraging you not to give up. It led you to becoming an instructor. When you talk about being in the rural area, a lot of times these are environments that are often forgotten about. And with them, they may not have you know the same access to various resources, but you made it your business to make sure that you will continue to share the arts. I know that you have client testimonials that are mind boggling, that they yeah. highlight the importance and you mentioned it, the healing aspects of art therapy. Will you talk a bit about that, Karen? 
I'd love to. Thank you so much. Yeah. My program is called Art as Self-Therapy, Wellness Through Creativity. And this is because of my own testimony and then the research I've done, because I'm not a scientist, but I was seeing as I was reading these reports about the brain and about creativity, I'm like, I've seen that happen. I know that happens. Um, and some of the examples, I, if you don't mind me telling a couple stories, um, I had a young man who... Um, we were in the homeschool world a long time, and I was I had my opened up my studio to to students um, because then their moms could teach my kids, you know, Spanish or <laughs> um, yeah. or science. So we we did kind of like our own little co op, and then we developed a big co op, and I had a lot of students with that. But this young man was struggling because he was number one ADHD and number two dyslexic. So. Unfortunately, his academic career was in the dumps. He he was discouraged, depressed, felt hopeless, felt stupid. And, you know, his mama knew that wasn't any of it true. So she brought him, she brought him to my studio. And that child thrived in the arts. He could paint, he could draw, he could sculpt, he could, he could do batik. He I started entering all my students' work in this big youth competition in our in our low country that was the best of the best of the schools. And my students were winning ribbons. Oh, wow. Well this young man started gaining confidence yeah. because of this success. Mm -hmm. And finally, at age, age 18, he was getting ready to graduate. He was able to, to get the confidence to do his academics. Mm -hmm. And that particular year, a piece that he did in my studio won not just first place, but best in the whole show. Hey. And he was in that beautiful bubble of, wow, the success when unfortunately he had a traumatic brain injury. He got a brain infection that gave, caused a stroke. And he became paralyzed on the right side and he lost his skull. He's got a plastic skull and multiple surgeries, four months of rehab in the hospital. And when he left, he still couldn't talk, communicate, barely walk. And his he, they were trying to keep his right hand from curling up, but he wasn't able to use his right hand at that point. And his mama brought him right back to the studio. Okay, yeah. And I endeavored to teach him to draw and right left-handed. Well, David did such a great job. It, it was very quickly evident that whatever connections, and this is where I started studying the brain, mm -hmm. those neural connections between left and right brain, the logic and, and the order and the movement and all of the skills of the left brain combining with the creativity, the imagination, the intuitive nature of our, our right brain had already been connecting in his, and being built in his brain in spite of the other deficits that he had been suffering as in, in, in his academics were already were already being built for him and this is what I assumed was happening well I got a call from his neurosurgeon he said what are you doing I've never called anybody's art teacher before <laughs> and and, and <laughs> said I just taught him to draw and right left hand and he said he's stronger with his weak hand than I am and I'm a surgeon he said, keep it, keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing because he is getting healing on the right mm -hmm. side of his body. Goodness. So he was doing the medical things and the and the therapy with, with the, the medical uh, world, but he also continued to develop his creative and artistic nature. And I am happy to say that he, David can talk, he oh. can walk. Oh. Uh, he's still a little stronger with his left hand and his right hand it has not curled up. He is living a good, fruitful life. Mm -hmm. And I, and he and his family, who I'm very close to say, they know that doing art changed that young man's life. Yes. On so many levels. And so many levels. Yeah. I mean, first of all, just by giving him the confidence yeah. that he wasn't stupid, that he had gifts, he had talents, and he had worth, it enabled him to get through his educational process with the other deficits, and then to overcome a severe injury like that with um, with art in his life. And then one other story, and this is an adult student, because I work with all ages, who was very talented and loved doing sculpture. And and uh, she she was a, a favorite friend and, and um, unfortunately got a, a severe breast cancer diagnosis and given like six months life expectancy. And she was doing all the radiation, chemo, surgery, all the medical stuff. 
But I had an idea. I had a big, big room installation porcelain art show I was preparing for. I'd already done a lot of the drawings and 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 the what what I was going to get in. I got into this big, big show and it was in nine months. And I said, Jan, you come, come help me with this show. Let's do this show together. And she said, I don't even know if I'll be there, Karen. But she started coming any day she wasn't at the hospital. She was in my studio working, doing beautiful work. We made cakes and cupcakes and candies and cookies and trays and and stands. And we found furniture in the Goodwill and refinished it and and made, you know, silk wall hangings to make it taste and see sweet shop. When people came in, they were pulling out their money to buy fresh chocolates and not knowing they were made out of porcelain. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking. This wasn't real. The sweets and the candies and the treats. <laughs> I had to get I had to get somebody who was a, who was a pastry chef to bring some food. <laughs> so people bring real food. <laughs> That's right. Um, but Jan was there all 17 days of the show, um, mm-hmm. and I'm happy to say, nine years later, she is completely not just in remission; she is cancer free. Well, and well, she well. did. I t- I've talked to her recently. She said, Karen, you know, I know I did the medical things, but there's no question that mentally and emotionally having something to do that was fruitful, that was beautiful, that was uh, gave me hope, gave me excitement and to live for made a huge difference in my life. Mm. And, you know, as I've studied now, it made me start studying all the research and finding out, well, just 15, 20 minutes a day of doing art or singing or, or any of these things, anything creative releasing serotonin, the happiness chemical, it it makes you feel better to do it. Mm -hmm. Here's one study for you. This is wild. They study people singing in the shower. (laughs) You like to sing? I bet you're a singer. I love singing. (laughs) Well, people singing in the shower. Okay, they're there. They're resting that logical, critical thinking, you know, always busy left brain. They're just rub-a-dub-dub scrubbing in the tub. <laughs> and while they're scrubbing, they're having a nice, nice belt out a song, maybe a favorite worship song or just something that was on the radio. And they get out and they're drying off. They're feeling good. They didn't realize all that serotonin was getting released. Mm. But all of a sudden, Maybe an idea comes to them. Maybe it's, yeah. it's, it's resolving an issue in the family or okay. something at work, mm-hmm. something they hadn't thought of before. They're not making any connection between singing in the shower and those divine mm-hmm. connections between left and right and neuro connections were happening while they were singing in the shower. So oh. everybody sing in the shower. Sing in the shower. <laughs> sing in the shower every day. This is powerful, Karen. So you have taken this the idea of art, the different forms of art, and you've gone beyond. And it's a tool to open the door to healing and restoration. Your testimonials are uh, just comforting. And I hope that our listeners are convinced with this power <laughs> of art therapy, the healing power that comes through art and creativity. And I do love that, you know, your, your patients, that your clients, they acknowledge, you know, the, the work from the scientists and the doctors. We don't want to dismini- dismiss uh, those expertise, but how about we open our minds to other forms of healing and uh, additional forms of therapy? Karen, That's clearly what I'm yeah. you're changing lives with what you're doing. And the example, can we all like resonate with that? I think most of us sing in the shower. I sing in the shower. I sing all the time. <laughs> I love to sing. My name means sing. I, I think I was born to sing. <laughs> Did I miss my calling? That's no. right. <laughs> but here's the deal. How about we challenge ourselves to start there? You know, sing every day and don't worry about the tune or the tone. Just to sing, let it out. Do something creative because I like what you said. We might not in that moment connect the dots I sang and then my my creativity opened and now I have a bright idea or I have an answer to the solution to the problem (laughs) that's been, you know, weighing on me for a week. Sometimes, I mean, most of us probably don't make that connection, but you heard it. You heard it from Karen. There is a connection and it doesn't have to stop with you singing in the shower. Karen, could you share (laughs) with our audience how they can connect with you? I want everyone to connect with you. I want everyone to sign up and be your client. You're making the world a better place, Karen. (laughs) 
you're so sweet. Yeah, I have I have a gift and um it's it's being launched the end of February. So by the time this is launched, that the, your 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 listeners will have this opportunity to get this free gift from me. It's usually part of my five thousand dollar program, but I'm going to give it away in these three free episodes. It's called a pop up podcast, and and in it, I'm going to give you lots of ideas for ways that you can stir up your creativity in your own life and ways to connect with me. And and so you want to get creative with Karen.com. That's the the way to reach and get get a hold of this. Just give me your email and name and we will get you set up for this pop-up podcast. It will be three free episodes about 20, 25 minutes long. And through that, you'll get tons of ideas. Hopefully you'll be able to relate to, to one, two, three, many of them, and even just make a journey of your own life to spend 20 minutes a day. And I have very, some of them are very easy ways. And of course, I'd love to work with people one-on-one -on -one and I have group programs. So there's all kinds of ways to connect and stir up the creative in your own life. Because, you know, the, the interesting thing in these tests, it's not only the good singers in the shower have that happen for them, or only the good artists have that happen for them, or only people who identify as artistic or as artists can have this no everyone is creative and that's a case that i make why is half of your brain wired for creativity if you're not made to be inventive and intuitive and, and use your imagination in your life uh, whether you like to journal or scribble or color uh, my my own mother is a great grandmother almost eight nine 18 times now and she loves to color with her great granddaughters and she said Karen I had no idea how much fun this could be just just you know relaxing and and just peaceful to just color with them you know you don't you think oh that's just something you do when you're a little child but she said no I see why they have adult coloring books now <laughs> they're really kind of fun and you know my 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 thing is you know if you see a room of five or six year olds and you ask them do you like to dance or sing or twirl or play in the playground or 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 um color and crayon and paint all of them are going to say yes but you ask a room of 15 and 16 year olds that same question, maybe 10% say yes. And I'm like, what happened to them in those 10 years? Maybe things like what happened to me? Oh, you can't sing. So don't sing. You can't sing or you can't draw or, you know, forget about it. Don't do it. And they get discouraged. That's that right brain is sensitive. It's like, it's like a budding flower that its petals are very gentle, but you give it enough light and some water and, and, and it gets the right temperatures of warmth and sun and it will blossom into its full glory and its beauty. Well, all of us, and maybe somebody's words have kind of squashed us in the bud, you know, nipped us in the bud. And we haven't really explored what we knew from very early on was something we really wanted to do. We wanted to sing, we or we wanted to draw, or we wanted to paint, or we wanted to find a way to, to um, express ourselves for what's inside of us. Maybe it's through writing. And we don't, we didn't think about being a writer. We thought about, you know, I just want to express myself. It's still there. I'm telling you, you're not too old. You're not, it's not too late and you are a creative. So good. So good. It's not too late. Everyone has the potential to expand the creative side. And clearly, yes, this is how God created us. And he doesn't put anything inside of us to be wasted. There is a reason. Left brain, right brain. There is a reason for it all. If you are ready to get creative with Karen, connect with Karen today. <laughs> Karen's information will be in the show notes. Karen, I appreciate you. I'm glad our paths cross through our program together. And I'm excited about your future as you continue to allow individuals to explore their creative sides. Thank you for being with us, Karen. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Shante. God bless you. <laughs>